All right, everybody. I am here with Mike Burton. Uh, I call him Comedian with Commitments, but uh, he just introduced himself as Comedian Father. You're, although you, I actually know you as Michael Patrick Burton as well when I see you officially listed on things, right? I do, because yes. uh, there's another Mike Burton. There's the L.A. Mike Burton. Ah. And so uh, I've explained it a few times. It's on my website why there's always a middle initial. Um, but uh, I... I did. There's a, the other Mike Burton, and he was in SAG and all that first. Uh huh. But the, the thing is, he changed his name to be Mike Burton. I did not, but you I still have to put in the middle Mike initial Burton. and stuff like that. Son of a. I had the same thing when I joined SAG. I was Mike Somerville my whole life as a kid growing up, everything. And then I went to join SAG. There was already a Mike Somerville, some sort of guitarist from the 70s. So I had to become Michael Somerville. And all my friends from childhood thought I was trying to be like Mr. Fancy or, oh, actor boy now, Michael right. Summer. I was like, no, I had to change it to, you know, for SAG. And it's a- well, I could have changed it to anything, right? Like some people, like you want to change it to your middle name. Yeah. Okay, so that would be Mike Patrick, but there's already a Mike Patrick. Yeah, He's sure. an announcer for yeah. ESPN. He's phenomenal, yeah. right? <laughs> and then they're like, well, what about your mom's maiden name? Okay, Myers. Now I'm Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Mike Myers. <laughs> They're all taken. <laughs> and he's very good at what he's he does. He's great. I can't go any direction. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, we'll th- we're thrilled you're here because you're the only one I actually know. Yeah, it's just me and some putz who changed his name. <laughs> and we've known each other for years in the New York comedy scene. Yeah, I mean, I mean back I in the day. I started in like 95, 96, and yeah. I've probably known you that whole time. I think so. That's about when I started. I was just out of college. I started messing around with the open mics and some of that in, in 95 or 6, I think. And I then, did Gladys's. I mean, that's where Gladys's I started, the that. famous Gladys. Absolutely. Where uh, Zach Galifianakis started. Oh Z- Gaffigan would be in there all the time. Right. Russ right. Maneve. Yep. Leo Allen. Like, uh, those are the guys that I always remember. Dean uh, Obidala. Obidala, sure. Who's everywhere. And yeah. just guys who went off to have real career careers. Right. <laughs> I was like, no, I started with really good guys. Right. I tell my son, no, I know Zach. I we know started the guys. <laughs> what are you this talking is how about? It began. I remember, you know, I remember Gaffigan in those early days yeah. too, man, just coming in and just being so damn funny. Like I remember like he just he come in, whether it was an open mic, he would get up anywhere too, which is what I always right. admire that guy. Yeah, even, yeah, he was even always. when he was starting to really, you know, get some steam, boy, he would it didn't matter where he would stand on the After lunch. The too. Rolling Rock commercial. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was a big thing that we all were like, he's doing Rolling Rock right, commercials. Rolling, I forgot about that, man, oh and man. He, my roommate came to see me one time at Gladys. Yeah. Like when I got passed to do the Saturday night. Okay. Which was the big thing. Like, ooh, yeah. it's a weekend. And a weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm a real comedian. Uh, like, it's 10 minutes. I was like, all right, I've never done 10 minutes. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> and uh, so I, my roommate came down and Gaffigan was on that show. And he, of course, was starting out, or not start. he was trying out stuff. Right. And uh, he bombed. Really? And I mean, bombed hard. Where he bombs so hard, my roommate still gets mad that he has a career. <laughs> oh, and I'm man. like, no, he's one of the best comedians around. He's like, no, hate him. And I'm really? like, would you stop it <laughs> one night? He's on. But that's right. the, that first impression kind of thing. Well, and yeah. it'll stick with him forever. No that's- matter how many shows he does, how famous he is. It doesn't matter. My roommate Never went over your nope, roommate. he bombed. <laughs> he bombed in a hamburger joint. <laughs> Which can be one of the tougher rooms to perform yeah, in, actually. Of course. <laughs> Well, that is funny that uh, we think about that because, exactly, we started then, and then you have, the reason I wanted you on today, um, not only because you're just a lovely person and fun to talk to, <laughs> yes. uh, but you have taken one of the paths that is uh, less common, and I, that's why I called you Comedian with Commitments. You have started, and you are now married with a child and a dog, right. and all the quote-unquote life responsibilities that we as comedians sort of run from, Correct. or in many cases avoid, mine included. I well, am. I think a lot of things you're told. Like, I remember being told when I first got, don't get a girlfriend steady, don't get married, it'll ruin your comedy. Yes. And yes. so for a long time, I think you believe that, and some guys are like, all right, and then they never and, commit, right. and it's you, it can be tough on, but there's no, look grass is greener, this is it. Like, I have somebody that I have to answer to. And the guys that don't, but they might want somebody to answer to every now and then. Right. So it's always... Well, and I think there is, I don't think, I know there's truth to it. I know, I'm sure you can name as well, comedians who over the years, um, you've watched them. Sometimes a really talented comedian 
saying, like, you see the girlfriend, and you go, uh-oh, and she wants to get married, and then they get married, and the, the comic, it's like, you know, it's like the fa the, the man is like the, the famous, like, no, no, it's all, nothing's gonna change, I'm still doing the clubs, right. I'm still doing the clubs, and you're looking at him like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and she, usually the wife, and I'm not saying anything negative about yeah. the one, but you know, it's life, and the woman wants to right. move forward with the marriage, and so sometimes I've seen a few guys survive the marriage, but then the kid comes along, and then yeah. that's usually the death now, it's like, yeah, guess who's not doing the road anymore? It's hard. Oh, but I'm mean, still gonna do spots in the city. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden the baby's born and the kid and needs you see health like insurance. Once a month exactly. baby in the city. And exactly. then it's just I've never and seen And then they anymore. move to the Midwest. I'm still gonna be back on weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll still come in. Is, and I am not by any means criticizing it's I believe me, I question my own decisions to stay single and not settle down. I, I dated some wonderful women and uh uh, I chose to stick with the career, and I don't know if it was the right move. I'm not criticizing that at all. I think it's wonderful. No, you never know. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of guys. But that... it's a tough thing to do. Yeah. Both. You look uh, at somebody like a Ted Alexander. Yeah. Been around forever. Yeah. Great comedian. Yeah. And just now got married. Yes. Yeah. But maybe... And Lenny Marcus as well. Lenny Marcus as well. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe the career is where you want it, and you're like, okay, now. Right. Seinfeld, I mean... Right. Right? I mean, for a hundred years, never that. married, then married the young girl, of course. Like, of course. why would you might marry a 19-year-old when you got 400 million bucks? <laughs> so, it, no, no, but it's still together. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's one that's lasted. You never hear about them. No. They're never on a back page. No. And that's somebody who could be on a back page or page six or whatever that thing is, like, all the time. Absolutely. And you never hear a word about it. There's no stories coming out about Seinfeld. No, no. No, and that's never been his way. I mean, he was... Those guys, are they're funny. They're pure comics, you know? I mean, yes. that's the one thing. When you do comedy and you start to hang out with comics, you realize it's a small world, obviously. There's, it's a real tight-knit, you know, kind of club. And but boy, man, they're pure comics. They they, they want to talk comedy. There's they're they're not Brad Pitt. They're not getting seen in the you right. know with the in the in the French Riviera. They're, I mean, Seinfeld shows up at the clubs and wants to tell jokes and right. I, I, and I, wants to hang out with comics. Wants to hang out with comics. You're comfortable around comics. That's exactly. It's almost the only athletes time you're are comfortable. comfortable comfortable around athletes because they've right. taken the hits they know what the practice is like and exactly. did you ever have a coach like yeah I had a coach like that you know like our stories are did you ever play a bad club like that? yeah uh, yeah you well, know hell, Gabe, what are you That's kidding it. go ahead get started <laughs> and you work with some guy who can top every bad story you have Absolutely. You're like, wow, and he's still doing it you're like <laughs> what do you mean well, and I, it's funny, I know uh, I got to have dinner with uh, with Leno in L.A. because we had wow. a mutual friend, Jimmy Brogan, used to be his yeah, writer. Yeah, they yeah. work at Comedy Magic in Hermosa. And uh, it was so funny, I was so excited. You know, Jay Leno, I'd never met him. And you get, first question, hey, you ever work, you know, ever work Charlie Goodnights down there in North Carolina? I mean, that's all he wanted to do is talk about comedy and clubs. Is that club still going? Is that, I mean, the whole dinner, just, you know, back and forth. Love and that. I said, man, exactly. And right away, I was at home, you know. Right. It's really... Um, and that's a guy that people make fun of, like being a hack and all that stuff, and his stuff is still what it used to be, and he right. hasn't come up, but he still has a following. He still goes out and does it. He does. Here's a guy who doesn't have to leave the house at all. Doesn't have to leave like the house Like a Seinfeld, like Chris Rock, loves never has to leave the house, loves. and they leave all the time. He Absolutely. does stand up and loves it, remembers those clubs that he started in. Sure. And the thing with Leno is, I mean, you hear this all the time, I never saw him live back when he was in the younger yeah, days, but I mean, all the stories where the guy was legend. He was, he was, he was the he was, one. He was the comic. He was amazing. Yeah. Every comic piled in the back of the room to watch him. Right. You know, he was just cutting edge and fresh and the whole thing. And obviously... You become the host, Middle America, and all that, and that, you know, yeah. Those are the guys I love talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, love talking. Because, I mean, comedy's one of those things where, no matter how famous you get, like, everybody had to start yeah. somewhere. It's like baseball. Like, there's minor leagues. Yes. Nobody just jumps in. It could take you a shorter time than most, right. or whatever, and there's some guys that get stuck in the minor leagues, ta-da, forever. forever. Yes. But you still make a career, you still have the family, you still do everything. And uh, the fact that he... Like remembers where he came from. Yeah, those guys. It's I love it. I, I agree. Yeah, no, it's it's. I it's, have nothing but respect for that. Absolutely. Wrong. And it is you know the one place that comedy club where we can control everything you know yeah. to a degree. You always hear and you know, even guys who get get a deal, get a sitcom deal or whatever, and then they come back to the clubs and like, man, I just want to be in a club where I can say what I want, do what I want. There's no you know corporate guy executive right. trying to tell me how to change this. There's or no do the, question about what you do. Exactly. If I mess it up, I mess it up. I mess it up. It's all mine. Yeah. yeah you don't have 19 suits trying to edit your script and all this. You know, right. Not uh, even a wife going. Well, why don't you? Why don't I? Yeah. <laughs> now let's get to that. You you have a wife now. Bring us up to speed. When, when right. were you doing comedy? How did you meet yeah. your wife? Uh, well, see, here's the thing. I think 
in my case, it works out because I was already a comic. Yeah. It's not something I started like leaving at night to go try this after You're we were married. leaving the banking that job. That never works, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to make money anymore, but I'm going to go make $100 this, this weekend. Dream. This weekend? Yeah. And then when are you going to work? Well, I'm going to work next weekend. You know, so I was already a comic. Um, still coming up, but still yeah. uh, started doing colleges. Uh so I was making a little bit of money. Okay. Um, but you married into it. You knew it. Yeah. It's and I I understand that it's a hard thing for. Well, how did you meet her? I met her. I was. Uh, I went to school for theater. Yeah. And uh, so I was in New York and doing stand up and stuff. And somehow uh, a friend of mine from college had a theater group and invited me to uh, direct a one act. Okay. And. Uh, or a scene, a couple of scenes in a in a scene night. Gotcha. Where they were going to invite agents and stuff. Would you mind coming in and directing a couple sure, of scenes? Sure, sure, I will. So I directed a couple, and I, her roommate was in one of them. Okay. And my wife was in a different one that I didn't direct. Okay. But afterwards, you go out and you all hang out. And sure. she and I just kind of gravitated to each other. Gotcha. Well, I had just gotten out of a relationship, like a couple of year relationship. Right. And uh, so I wasn't interested in really dating anybody. Right. So the last night of the show, you go out, you have the cast party. We hung out. At the end, she goes, call me sometime. It's the 90s. You call me. <laughs> okay. And she goes, no, you call me. And I go, all right. Never called her. Really? Yeah. It's like, your nope, first fight. Calling. You haven't even started the relationship. No, done. <laughs> no, nope, not calling. And uh, so finally, a few months goes by. It's the middle of the summer. And uh, I get a call in the middle of the afternoon. And answer. And uh, may I speak to Mike? This is he. This is Michelle. You never called me. I said, you're right. I never did call you. Yeah. She said, what are you doing tonight? I said, I have a uh, spot at the comic strip. She goes, well, I'm having some friends over, and I live uh, just down on First Avenue Look at if you're you. interested in coming over. And I go, yeah, I'll come over after my spot. So I walk down there, and uh, we've been together ever since. Look at you. So not it's calling is the way to go, not guys. Not calling. <laughs> Be hard to get. So, okay, so this is a good start then. You're, you're already performing. You're already in the business, as you say. She right. knows what she's getting into. The relationship progresses, and it's getting... How long did you date before you got married? Two years. Okay. She and, lived with me for a little while. All right, and what are your dates? Does she come into the club, and then you go out for a drink after? I mean, that's the typical... Every, every woman I've ever dated, like, oh, I got a show. She did come to the clubs a little bit. Okay. Um, but then she started, like... It's one of those things where she thinks she knows everybody. Okay. They're like, no, you're still guest. You're still a guest. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> but we dated, and uh, and like I said, we lived together. Okay. So I would leave and go do the clubs at night and yeah. come back and all that. And it's, I realized that it's hard for the wife or the other, the spouse. Absolutely. Like on both sides, whatever. Because um, there's... You work on weekends. Yeah. You, I mean, nights and weekends. Nights and weekends. Which is but, when most normal people are right. available. And that's when her friends are going to get married on a weekend. Yeah. I'm not going. Yeah. You know, her cousin is going to get married on a Friday night. I'm not going to be there. Right. Get used to that. Yeah. That's going to happen a lot. Yeah. You know, there's a couple where, and I still, you still get the question of, uh, well, can't you just cancel that? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I don't ask you to not go to work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you mean? You can't just ask me to not go to work. Yeah. It just, but it's. Because it looks like fun. It doesn't look like a job. Comedy. You get to go hang out with friends. Sure, sure. You know, we get to hang out at a club all night. You're at the comic strip. You're at the cellar, wherever. You're hanging out with comics. Yeah. You go do your 15 to 20 minutes. You come back, you're still hanging out with your friends. Yeah. And it's, I get it. And it looks like fun. You're getting the laughs. Yeah. And sometimes you're not making much money. Right. But it's still money that's coming in. It Absolutely. still pays a bill. Absolutely. And you can't not do it. I'm just not going to... Now I'm just going to cancel on something. Well, it is. It's hard for... I think it's hard for people who don't do it to understand. Like, you never... You know, if you were a brain surgeon, she said, well, can you just cancel that surgery and come right. to the wedding? Well, no, of course not. I think, like you say, it's hard for people on the outside because they don't... They think it's just silliness and fun and you're yeah. hanging in a bar telling jokes. And, you know, they don't realize it's probably twice as important for us to go to the job because it's hard to get that job. It's right. not... We don't have work every day, nine to five. We and have if to I fight. cancel on Tuesday for that wink and gig... Yeah. I'm not working there again. You're done. Why would you have me back? You're done. Just cancel. Exactly. On. Exactly. So I don't cancel. I don't. If I've accepted the gig, unless it's something big, right? There's certain things in life. And there's, most club owners and bookers will understand. Yeah. Some will get pissy with you, right. but for the most part, they understand. Right. Family, on the other hand, is like, you're seriously not going to go to my cousin's 
daughter's christening. Right. I'm seriously not. Right. Yeah. And it's I also, on Saturday. And I also, no. by the way, don't know her name. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Didn't even tell you. I'm not. No. <laughs> no Enjoy we, your family, though. <laughs> no, we missed a lot of stuff. But it, it sounds like you got that ironed out early. Then it's like, okay, here's how it is. Here are the rules. Now, does she work as well during this whole courting period? Is your yeah, yeah, work? yeah. She okay. was uh, like regular day time dental hours? assistant. Okay. Sang in a band. Oh, too. oh, when we first met, see, sang in a band, and that was very cool. That is cool, and also good because she has that creative gene. Then, right, yeah, right, which theater is, background, which is important, and all that. So that all that comes in handy. Absolutely. Um, no, because you just try to create a straight up like corporate lawyer who doesn't know anything about the arts. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. That's where you, I think, really get into right, trouble. Yeah. Exactly. And so, uh, it was cool being able to go watch her perform. Down at the, like, at the village, like, at the bitter end. Absolutely. You know, she'd be at Mercury Lounge, like, some great clubs. Yeah. Just, like, us playing strip, yeah. stand-up New York, whatever. Those were the clubs to play. Yeah. And I would go and hang out at the bitter end. I loved it. Absolutely. You know, see some bands that I had never seen. Her band. Sure. was a funk band. Nine people. She was the only girl. How like So cool. it's eight guys and her, and she knocked it out. She was great. Is that right? Loved it. I and, love it. Uh, and what a fun night as a comic to be like, hey, I'm not working tonight. I'm going to see someone right. else. That's so fun to go She'd perform at the Bag It In in Boston Comedy Club's right upstairs. Yeah. So yeah. we'd go up there. Now it's totally different. Now it doesn't look anything like no, it did. No. But at that time, we'd go up there. I'd come downstairs and somebody, or she'd be at the Bag It, and then Greer Barnes would come walking in like, man, I just did this set and it was really cool. I didn't. Like, I just played around the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching my girlfriend sing. That's it's, so oh. wild. So it's cool. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, how do you not? Well, that, and again, exactly. That's a fun setup. New York City, that's the energy. At some point, though, a child comes along. Right. Yeah. Get married. Married in 2000. Married. Uh, child born 2002. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and so, that's all of a sudden a, you know, a whole other layer of real. Right. Yeah. So now, now you got a little I'm home during life the week, depending on you. But I get to be stay at home dad. Okay. So, so during the so days. that works out. So you have that responsibility, and then at night it's not as big a deal if you haven't been out there all day and you're gone at night. Yeah. But it makes there's another level of. So she would work during to, the day. You would take care of the I'd baby. I'd take care of him during the day, gotcha. and she'd come home at night, and then I would do spots or whatever. Perfect. But now you're gone all weekend. Yeah. You that's know, and so that's now you have the baby all weekend. Yeah. But we were lucky; our son was great as a baby, not colicky, didn't have problems like that. Yeah, like there was no; it was just a normal baby. It wasn't like, yeah, I know you're gonna suffer this weekend with him being in this state. But right. that wasn't our case, so right. very lucky. Right. Um, but uh, a well-behaved it does make you baby, a well-behaved baby. Yeah. Somehow, I don't know how it happened, but, or at least uh, you guys just didn't know the signs that things weren't. Right. Hey, what's wrong with him? He just lays there. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's a level of the gigs that you'll take now. Like, how is the money leaving for a week? Uh-huh. Am I, is it good money leaving for a week? Because if yes. it is, I'll go. But if it's only mediocre money, I'll just stay here and make a little bit less, but I'm here. And, I, I, and that's the hard part. That's where, that's where the friction can come with comics. Okay. Are, what are you willing to sacrifice for the fans? Because there is sacrifice. But I love that you say that because I, as a comedian who says stayed single with minimal responsibilities, I had this whole say yes to everything, wherever it yeah. was, whatever it was. And then guys I've seen who've gotten married, added a kid, all this stuff, you all of a sudden start to draw the line as an outside life. And you say, I'm no longer willing to take that road gig. And as a result, I always used to think, God, you guys are oh, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot by saying no. And instead, it was the opposite. You became more in demand. Guys would say no, or that's not enough money, or that I can't do it. Sorry. We're all of a sudden like, oh. Oh, well, how much do you need? And I was like, is that how it works? Like, sometimes. Some, not say, everywhere. Well, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now this has worked out well then. Your wife has continued with the, the day job. Yep. She's so a dental hygienist. That's where health insurance and everything then comes from? Not mine, but hers, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Because I know a lot of guys, like, I'm like, what do they do? How do they do it? And it's right. usually the one the other side has, a stable job, has the health insurance, yeah, has all yeah. that kind of She's got it for her and my son. Okay. You're, care you're on your own. Um, <laughs> Well, I had SAG for a while. Okay. You know, when I was doing warm-up and stuff, I right. had SAG. Right, And so, uh, that was great. And then, of course, I get the show that gets canceled. And uh, Which show now you? I, I did Revolution, okay. the very first season. All right. Oh, only season. Okay. All right, I get the one-season show. Sure, sure. It started at the same time as The Chew, that R.C. Yes. Smith yes. does warm-up for that. It's been on 
the entire time. Uh, I was like, nope, see ya. See ya later. So I had another regular on Bethany, and I loved it. That okay. was a great job. And, and just the, for our listeners real quick, a warm-up is just that when you tape a TV show. Yes, you're a cheerleader for the audience. Yeah, a guy comes you just out make before, him clap. makes him Somebody yeah. says, I wrote a book. Yay, they wrote a book. There's Gets no it. reason to clap. Right. But you have to because it's live TV, and it sounds like you And it's a great should, gig. You can stay in town. You make money. Down, make money, you're, go out on the weekends, do yeah, shows. Yeah, it's, it's a nice great. gig, especially if you have responsibilities. It's during the day. Yeah, at night you can still do show, so yeah. it's really perfect. Yeah, um, it's tiring, but it's it's, it's as close to a real job as I think I'm gonna get. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it's close to hours. You have to be there, say at uh, seven thirty, right? And you're not leaving till say four, right? That's you know, so depending day, on yeah. how many shows you're taping, there's two show days, there's three show days, right? Um, but uh, but it but it is nice to do. So you do stand up, you do like you try to do warm up whatever making that money okay and and being able to support so i had sag doing warm up is a union job okay and then your show gets canceled and they're like you'll have it for a little while and done yes ah! yes so and, and that's the, that's the you know, the rough thing of this business is that money can i mean come pr- in healthy fashion pretty consistently for right. a bit and then like you say and then just go away in a heartbeat I and mean, you still sag is a weird thing cuz you you have to make so much money right. to get the insurance. Get insurance. But if you don't make any money, you still have to pay dues because you're still in the union. Right, right. But you just took my insurance. Now right. why am I in here? Why am I it's even in that catch-22. Yeah. But when you get something, you get paid really well. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But there's no guarantee. But, there's no... but you're going to stay in the union. I guess I am, <laughs> mafia. <laughs> I remember the first time I booked something big. I booked a Royal Caribbean commercial. And it was a big campaign. And it ran for a while. And it was. It was great. You start getting regular checks. You know, you, you shot it months ago and you're still getting paid because it's still airing. Love it's it. a wonderful feeling. Yeah. And I remember I had this strange, I was eight years of Catholic school. I had, I always felt guilty. I had guilt about this money. I was like, God, you know, I'm just making some money. I'm not doing anything. And I remember another actor said no 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 you're getting paid right now for that last 12 years of auditioning of trial and error of practice, all that kind right. of stuff and I was like that's a great way of looking at it you worked for free for 12 years you finally booked something if you did if you amortized it out by by hourly right. yeah you're probably making four bucks an hour if you know, so don't feel guilty you take those checks right to the bank right like, right right great way of looking well, at it's it. like comics I mean you're yeah. not getting like if you do a college you're not making 1500 bucks an hour no you're taking like the flight there flight and everything there. else and all the hours <laughs> and driving through snow in New Hampshire. I remember driving through a snowstorm in New Hampshire uh, and just, just getting to a school and there's like 45 yeah. kids and they're miserable. <laughs> Three days and later, you get home. home. Like, was it you who told me it was great? Uh, said comedy, like comedy, basically a college, all that is just like traveling to a state because there's a check on a bench. Was that was that you that told me? No, but that's a such great a line. great thing. He goes basically all gigs, road gigs are are there's a, there's a check on a stool in Wisconsin. You have to fly <laughs> to get it, and then you can bring it back. I mean, that's really that's what, what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly to Wisconsin, get the check off the stool, and bring it oh, home. Yeah. <laughs> every school, and they're all. Ugh. Well, it sounds like it's worked well for you, though. I mean, it, it's it sounds like it's been a kind of for for the mountain of responsibility that it can be. Uh, it sounds like you guys have handled it nicely. Somehow it has. It's really worked out. And like I said, I mean, my wife marrying into it. I know it can be hard, but she's great with it now. Yeah, he still gets a um, let's say uh, just Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. So we didn't have anything planned as far as going away or anything any plans so i booked that weekend yeah but i booked it in jersey and i knew i was just gonna go out and back yeah and uh all of a sudden she goes oh yeah we're gonna go down to south carolina and visit my dad i was like we're not yeah we have a show yeah you guys can go and uh she goes you're not gonna you can't just cancel that's one of those things and i was like yeah. no how long have you been doing already, this <laughs> what do you mean yeah she goes well it's not a big club i don't care <laughs> What do you mean? And so, stuff like that still happens. Yeah. You know, not often. Like coming, like doing ships or doing a week in San Antonio or yeah. wherever it happens to be, uh, you just know that those are going to happen. Yeah. But they also pay rent. Right. And then every other bill that we have. Every, exactly. So, we both get to collect our money. Right. But my one thing is, my stipulation, even if it's a one night or whatever, I don't. I don't leave my apartment if the money doesn't pay a bill, That's whatever good, that bill is. It right. could be garage bill. It could be right. cable, right. whatever that bill is. It doesn't have to be huge. Right. It doesn't have to be rent every week. I mean, that would be nice, right. but I get it. But there's people that go, 
hey, you want to come out and headline on Wednesday for 75 bucks? Nope. No. I'm not. No. You know, and it feels good to say no sometimes. Right. But at the same time, it doesn't do me any good. Right. Right. No, I think that's... When it, like we said, it's a good line to draw, though, because it's such a weird, vague business. We never know when to say yes, when to say no. We never know how much to ask for all that. And it sounds like, you know, having this this grounded world and responsibilities, it gives you a little perspective. You're like, oh, right. no, I won't go for that amount of money. You know, whereas if you're just single and lying there on the couch, like, well, who am I to say no, right. even though it's 30 bucks for a spot, you know, might as well... Right, you're, yeah. you're single, it's like, oh, that's like a... Yeah. 36 pack of beer. Exactly. <laughs> it's a I'm going to buy a 36 pack. That I'm covers, living it that up. covers the beer bill. I won't have to buy beer for three days if I get the 36 pack. So you're set. You know, I mean, it's just a different way of... I love and I it. might get to have dinner one night. Yeah, All yeah. right. This is now we're really talking. <laughs> Dollar menu, not this week. So it's... It, they'll give you a meal. You know, I mean, you're single, you're like... they'll. We're going to feed you. We can do it. We'll give you 75 bucks and feed you. Right. Oh, oh yeah. now you got me. Yeah. All right, now the eyes are up. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's a there's definitely got to be a balance, and it's you can't just say, I'm leaving my family tonight to go do this. Right. You know, and there's things where they do stuff. Sure. But it's, it's nice to have those nights. No, definitely. Definitely. I'm a little more rounded as a person, which is something comedians are always struggling for, to have some semblance of a, you know, kind of, of a real life. A real yeah. life and a rounded it's life. It's very rare that I'm home on a weekend. Yeah, and sure. I hate, I hate being home on a Friday night. Yeah. Friday and Saturday, but especially that Friday night, because I know somebody's out there doing a show yeah. somewhere that I could be doing. Well, it's a weird feeling when you spend 15, 20 years doing shows on a weekend. It is a strange feeling to not be at a show. And you're it's like, oh, God, odd. this is so awesome and freeing. And then an hour later, you're like, I need to go to a club. Like, I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't even know how to talk to you people. <laughs> my, my final question for you um, is, is what, uh, if you could do anything, anything, sky's the limit, money's no object, you know, in your life, in your career, Anything in the world. There's no barriers to entry. You have a zillion dollars if that's what you know you need to. What would you do from here on out? Wow. Um, if I had, if money was no object, and no I could object. just do anything, you do anything you want. It could be in the business, out of the business. You could. I would probably, uh, probably still do stand up. Okay. It'd be odd though, because let's say you just you got the money from just hitting the lottery. Right. So now you still have the same fame that you did. Which is none. Right, right. Right? So nobody's paying to come see the millionaire comic. <laughs> so I'm still doing the clubs, but now I can't, like, I'll take your 75 bucks. Right. You know, what do I care? 75 Give it to the opener, you Give know? It to the, right. But now what am I going to do with that? Right. So, but you still do the, I would still be at the level of playing the same clubs. Okay. But there'd be no pressure right. to make as much money as you can. The thing that I think I would change, uh, I'd buy a house somewhere. Maybe a Florida, maybe a South Carolina, someplace nice, but it would be on a golf course, and I would just, I would be that golfer guy. <laughs> I love golf. I could totally I'm see. I'm not you very doing good, that. I could totally but I see enjoy it. it. And being that guy, like if, like there's no retirement plan in this. Yeah. Everybody talks about it. when are you gonna retire? No. No. Rickles go to the day you die. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. So there's no retirement. But if I could, if you have enough money to where you just live on a golf course, and I could just go golf golf with the guys and I'm going to go this weekend and do a show do somewhere. A show, yeah. Sorry, guys. Let the cats go, guys. You know, just be that guy. Fun. But I don't play cards. I mean, whatever. I could see but you doing that. I would, that I think would be ideal. You could travel whenever, wherever. Yeah. And then if I'm at home, and go play a round of golf. Although I would love to see, with a zillion dollars, I'd love to see your argument with your wife how you had to go down to a show for 75 bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be at Wisecrackers Allentown this weekend. What are you doing? Which bill's that going to pay? I'm going to fly myself to Allentown to do the Wisecrackers because I love that room. I started there. I got to go back to... I told him I'd come back. Take your private jet. <laughs> still not filling it up. I make a million dollars. There's still like 12 people there that are... <laughs> just like what are we doing what is we... <laughs> well Matt thank you so much for stopping by absolute pleasure congratulations oh, on, on making it work and juggling all those <laughs> it's not an easy task and you've, you've made it happen uh, like I said I've seen a lot of guys you know try to take it on and say oh next thing you know they're sitting behind a desk somewhere in Scranton so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah. now you've done it and I uh, look forward to another 20 years of this together thanks man absolutely cheers man thanks we'll, for having me on we'll see you next time